In today's tutorial, we're gonna do this glowing lines on a footage. The technique that we're gonna do today, it's called rotoscoping. If you haven't heard of rotoscoping before, it's basically an animation technique that animators use to trace over a footage to create a realistic result. But these days, you'll see a lot of abstract and experimental results from rotoscoping as well. After Effects has this tool called Roto Brush Tool. You can start from like one frame and After Effects will try to analyze what is it that you're trying to rotoscope and just automatically apply it to the whole scene. You want to go to this Roto Brush Tool. As you see, you can't start rotoscoping on this scene because if you click on the scene here, basically you're just gonna move your footage. So we can't do it under composition panel. So what you have to do is double click on your footage and then it will bring up this layer panel and that's where you're gonna do your rotoscoping basically. So yeah, so this is the composition panel and layer panel and you have to do the rotoscoping under layer panel. As soon as you open your layer panel here, you will see our cursor becomes this kind of like green tool thing. So that's basically your brush. My brush is really small, so I'm gonna enlarge my brush. You have to hold control and then left click on your mouse and just drag it up. So drag it up to enlarge it and to make it smaller, drag it down. So I'm just gonna start maybe like that. So make sure your playhead is at the start of your composition. And then we're just gonna basically brush over this person because that's what we're gonna isolate. So when you brush it, it doesn't even have to be like perfect. You can just like roughly brush it just as long as your brush stroke doesn't go out of the object that you want to rotoscope. As you see here, once I finish that, After Effects just analyze it by itself and it guesses what is it that you want you, that you're trying to isolate. And obviously it's reading pretty well because like it isolates the whole body there. There's just a bit of stuff that's missing like that, the jackets and that part. So we can fix that by just clicking on it again to add that area. And also I'm gonna add that bit of a hair. So I'm gonna make my brush a bit smaller. So just like that is fine. And also we don't have to do this perfectly. So yeah, as you can see, the hair is not selected perfectly. It's fine because we're literally just creating outline over him. Also another thing that I need to mention is that as soon as you create those brush strokes, you'll basically create this layers. I guess like an effect layers underneath your footage. Now, the more layers you have under the Roto brush strokes here, the slower your After Effects will be. So just make sure you don't add too much brush strokes. Just trying to minimize that as much as you can. Now that we've done the first frame, I'll just play it on my composition here and just see if there's any error. So obviously, as you can see there, the jacket's kind of like whoop, like that. So we're gonna have to fix that. And also I think the hand at the end, towards the end just kind of like gone like that. So we're gonna fix that as well. It's rotoscoping pretty well around here. And then I think the major thing is the jacket here. So as you can see on the right here, as I play my playhead, so it's doing that. So we're gonna start from here and then I'm gonna make my brush a bit bigger. I'm gonna add that area. So it's selecting the area. Now if we move forward, now the jacket's all fixed. Now, even though the jacket's fixed, there's a bit of like spire that's selected as well. So I wanna fix that actually. Obviously we can't add that in, we have to erase it. And in order to erase it, you can hold Alt on your keyboard and then select the area. And basically as soon as you hit Alt, your cursor just changed to a red circle with a minus icon on it and that just means erase. And if you release your Alt, obviously it's a green circle, which means add. So I'm just gonna make my brush a bit smaller now and I'm gonna hit Alt and just erase that area. Another thing that I noticed is that I'm trying to make the this pink purple line merge together. So I don't want like two kind of like mask here because that's gonna create two masks when you auto trace it later on. And it's fine, but it just caused a bit of problems for me anyway. So I'm gonna try to combine this mask with this. So basically in order to do that, I'm just gonna erase this area here and basically that's gonna combine the mask like that. All right, let's preview it again. So I'm just gonna preview it over here. So it's playing on the composition. So I'm actually gonna trying to fix this area here. So that's fine, but if we move one frame forward, 
you can have the chance to get rid of this area there. I'm gonna zoom that in and I'm gonna erase that area. So one thing that I forgot to mention as well, when you're choosing your footage, it's best to have a footage that has contrast. The higher your contrast, the better. Now, as I play my playhead here, and if we watch this hair area, so because the hair is starting to touch the coat or the blazer, it's starting at this point, it created two masks. So I don't want that because I don't want to create two masks. So I'm gonna try to combine that by erasing that area. So I'm gonna add that area back in. Yeah. Before we continue, I want to share Envato Elements with you. I do a lot of collage animation and often have to use stock footage for my motion graphics. So it's so helpful to have access to a library that has everything I need, like Envato Elements. And it's not just stock photos and videos. They have textures, fonts, music, and even sound effects. They even have some character designs. I wasn't kidding when I said it has everything I need. Comparing this to some other platforms, the price is really good. Especially this is an all-in-one package. Click the link in the description below to subscribe now. What you need to do next is auto trace. So auto trace will automatically detect the, I guess, the edge of your footage and then it'll create mask out of it. So the mask will be important for us when we're creating the glowing lines. So in order to do auto trace, you will want to go to layer up here, layer, and then go to auto trace. And then usually I just choose work area and leave the channel as alpha and leave the others as is and hit OK. And then it will kind of like analyze your footage. It's auto tracing depending on your computer again. Um, so mine literally done in under a minute, but yeah, depending on your computer performance, obviously. So it's created this mask now. So if we hit M on our footage, it created mask path keyframes as well for you. So that's pretty cool. The next thing you want to do is to create a solid. So control Y for solid. And then I'm just going to type in glow lines. And then I'm going to copy this mask and paste it on my solid layer. And then I'm going to apply Saber. So if you don't know, Saber is a free plugin from Video Copilot. And basically, yeah, think of Star Wars Saber. That's basically the, I think, the origin of this plugin. I'll put the link in the description below and apply that to your solid layer. And then first thing that you want to do is to open Customize Core and then change the core type to Layer Mask. Now, basically, your Saber is following your mask, which is pretty cool. And then usually I would just change the mode of my solid layer to screen so that it shows our footage. But obviously now we don't see the background, right? Because we have the roto brush on the footage. So what I usually do, I'll just duplicate it. And then I'm going to turn off this top layer and lock it just for reference in the future. And I'm going to delete the mask on the bottom layer and delete the roto brush as well. Now you have your Saber. You can also go to preset and Saber has a lot of different preset and they're really cool. So I'll show you one. So it's fire. It's creating this like fiery look. For this one, I'm actually just going to go with Patronus. There you go. Um, yeah, and you can always like adjust more in here. Um, I'm just going to readjust a couple of things. Firstly, if you go core size over here, I'm going to change it from 2 to 1.5. And I'm gonna add up the glow intensity a little bit to 75, so it's glowing a bit more. Also the glow spread, so it's spread out a bit more, so to 0.23. And also, of course, you can change the color. So I'm gonna change this color, because I feel like even though the color blends in really well with my scene, it has this kind of like bluish, calm kind of color, I actually want the lines to stand out a bit more. So I'm gonna use like purplish green color, okay, yeah. So I quite like that. And another thing that you can do, you can soften the core. So at the moment, I feel like the core is really harsh. So I want to kind of soften it a little bit or basically just adding a bit of feather onto it. So you can do that under customize core here and then go all the way down to core softness. So I'll see what it looks if I put one. Yeah, so it softened it a little bit. So that's pretty nice. So I'm going to just do two. So it soften up a little bit. And then maybe I'll turn down the core size and turn up the core softness. And you can also add up the glow spread to 0 0.3 maybe. So it's spread out a bit more. And yeah, you can also adjust uh, the glow distortion here as well, but I'm just going to leave it as is. So yeah, that's how you do the glowing line. So if you play this, that looks pretty cool. Now you can also animate these lines. So I'm going to try to do that. 
by animating the start offset and end offset. I've activated the stopwatch of the start offset and end offset. So if I hit U on my solid layer, it'll show up under it. I'm gonna close this mask so that we're not too distracted by it. I'm gonna go to the very end of my composition, create keyframes there. I think I'm gonna go back to the first keyframe and I'm gonna leave the start offset as zero and offset 50. And I'm gonna go to the end and start offset to 100. Leave the end offset as 100 as well. And I'm gonna move the second keyframe of start offset to somewhere there and the first keyframe of the end offset to somewhere there. So it's just kind of like overlapping a little bit. So this is the result. So as you can see there, there's a bit of a glitch with your lines. I, to be honest, I really don't know how to fix it. I've tried to look it up online on how to fix it, but no one seemed to give me an answer. But my only solution is quite manual. It's just by deleting the keyframes that's obviously glitching. So what I mean is, I'm just gonna move my playhead one by one here. So as you can see, this keyframe there, that's obviously glitching because the previous one is like that. And then this one just kind of like glitch like that. So I'm gonna just delete the glitched mask, I guess. And this one as well. It's just so that to reduce the kind of like glitchiness that it has. And the good thing with my footage, it's slow motion. So if you delete one or two keyframes, it won't be too obvious. So I'm not deleting all of the glitchiness. I'm just deleting the ones that's super obvious like that. So obviously I have some big gaps here. So what I like to do is I'm gonna just do it manually. So I'll go to the ones that has big gaps like that and I'm gonna manually move this mask. So I double click on my mask and just manually move this mask so that it um, kind of fit with my footage here. So it still glitches a little bit around the leg, but I'm just gonna leave it as this because I actually kind of like that look of the glitchiness. It feels more like an energy. If any of you knows how to fix it, let me know. But that's basically how you create a rotoscope glowing line on After Effects. If you have any requests on what tutorial you want me to do next, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you next time.